Hey guys, Chef here with Ghost Night Gaming, and if you haven't noticed from the title, we're going to be doing a little bit more with Skyrim. This time we're looking at some of the more ridiculous things you can potentially do with some of the different skills and uh, some of the crafting in the game. Now, I've seen other, uh, other stuff on this all across, and some of this that I'm going to talk about you may have heard of if you've played enough Skyrim and been to enough of the forums and stuff like that, but basically this is a way to potentially uh, break Skyrim in a couple of different ways, uh, and all interesting ways. The The only thing I'm going to say is the nice thing about this way of breaking the game. If you're familiar with uh, Oblivion and uh, Morrowind, the, the last two Elder Scrolls titles, uh, there were several, uh, several very uh, game-breaking ways you could... Uh, build up your character to make them practically invincible. Uh, but the nice thing I like about this one, this is actually one you could essentially turn off uh, if you need to. Now, we'll introduce you to uh, my lovely lady uh, Lalandra here in a moment and kind of show you uh, exactly how uh, scary this is. But what I'm basically talking about is how to do the uh, restoration potion plus the enchanting and alchemy uh, trick to basically make ridiculous pieces of gear. Uh, I found a lot of uh, other information while researching this uh, is not very clear about all the steps involved and some of the ways to do it. So I'm hoping, and I'm hoping this isn't a super long video, that I can find a clear and very good set of steps for anybody that's interested in at least experimenting with this trick to see exactly how it functions and what to look out for to be able to do this fairly early on. Now, that being said, this is not necessarily going to be super quick. It's not quite like my getting your character to level 25 or 30 within uh, a couple hours because of muffle and stuff, and I'll have uh, links for that either somewhere on the screen or down below in the comments, but this one can still be done fairly early on. You don't need to be super high level to do it, though some leveling will help. Now, what I'm talking about is, uh, for anybody that's unfamiliar, is a way of using alchemy to create potions that allow you to make ridiculously high-powered enchantments. Now, one of the things I'm talking about here is we're going to look at some of the pieces of gear I have, and I'll show you why. I have a ring, an amulet, and a, and a uh, circlet that if you look down at my uh, health, magicka, and stamina, they are at ridiculous numbers. I mean, that's what you're seeing there is actual in-game numbers for it. That is 32 million health, stamina, and magicka. I know, crazy, right? And it's just from three pieces of gear. Now, here we are, we're facing off against the dragon. He's pretty tough, normally. But as you can see, he's taking a couple of shots at me, and it's not even registering. I mean, she's not wearing armor. She's actually not even wearing clothes, because, you know, with that kind of hit points and stamina, who needs to? Now, the other thing I've been able to do with this is because of the gear I can make and enchanting, is I can also upgrade my gear to ridiculous levels. Now, I've already talked about the, uh, the equipment, so we have this, my Ever Run which increases my stamina by ridiculous amounts, my mana font, and the uber health. You, know, you can see why I called it that. But also take a look at my weapons. They're not enchanted right now, but these two daggers, uh, if you compare, you know, I've got this uh, legendary iron dagger. Here's an orcish dagger, which is a higher tier weapon than the iron dagger. And look at the numbers we have here. It's ridiculous. And if you look down below, you can see that my damage with my two daggers is over almost 70,000. So watch when we actually pick a fight with this guy. We're just going to hit him. That's it. Dragon's done. That's all there is to it. Okay, so I've rambled on about this for long enough. I'm going to start a new character, and I'm going to go through all the steps. Like I said, this may be a, a, a lengthy video. I'll try to actually timestamp the steps as we go. But yeah, I'm going to save this game, loot this dragon, and I'll be back. Okay, so we've gotten ourselves out of the intro. We're now 
uh, free to cut loose and go wherever we want to go. So now we're going to start getting ready for this. So we are just outside of Riverwood and we've got a couple of things to do. First thing we need to focus on after I get this level done is we need to start working on our alchemy. The easiest way to start working on your alchemy is just start picking up every potential ingredient that you can find as you move along. Getting our uh, alchemy up to the appropriate level is going to make things considerably easier and, well, it's essential if we want to do this. So you're going to want to get your alchemy up to 40 before we can really successfully do this trick because we need three levels in the first skill. We're going to need Benefactor and we're also going to need uh, one more skill. We're going to need the skill just up above this. Once we've got all three of those skills and at least one level in the other two and three levels in this, we'll be able to do everything that we need to do. Of course, there are certain ingredients that we are going to need if we want to progress and actually do all this stuff, the particular uh, formulas that we're going to need. I'm also going to share them in the comments below, but you're going to want to see all of those things. And we're going to try to show you where as many of those things can be found are. And I'm actually going to do another video a little bit later that shows you a really good recipe. So see this blue butterfly? This is an essential ingredient. You're going to want to grab as many of them as you can. You don't need a ton of them, but it is used for the potions of enchanting. In addition, any of the snowberries you find, and there's going to be a bunch of fish that you're going to be looking for as well. The Abseon Longtail and the Cyrodiilic Spade Tail are going to be two of the things we need. We also need Salt Pile. Now, Salt Pile is actually going to be very easy to find. Uh, the other one's a little bit harder. So we've got a couple of places to find some of the different things, and I'm going to show you how to find the, the hardest to find ones. Okay, great thing about this here, we've got a good thing that can uh, give us a bit of a boost while we're trying to level our alchemy. Uh, the Guardian Stones, we can use the uh, Thief, and this will actually uh, increase the amount of... Uh, experience we earn while using our alchemy. I think the, the mage one works as well because of where alchemy sits, but use the thief and it'll help you out. After we've done that, and this is something you can do right as soon as you get there, we're going to keep working our way from Riverwood over to Whiterun. And once we're in right Whiterun, we're going to start getting to the other places we need to go to find all our ingredients, get some extra money, and get ready to go. I am going to have a link to a video I just recently did that shows a couple of uh, hidden chests that can give you some extra money, some of the equipment you need, and some extra stuff to sell. That way you can have all of the pieces of gear that you need to be able to do all of your enchanting and do all of your alchemy. So I'm going to see you guys over at Whiterun. I'm going to go pick some flowers, and I'll see you soon. All right, so we've made it to Whiterun. Hopefully you guys are ready for the next part. And I forgot to, uh, to take a moment. I'd like to introduce you to Nolan the Nord. He will be our test dummy for this little thing. So once you get yourself to Whiterun, you're going to want to sell anything and everything that you have on your person to try to get as much money as you can. Also, hopefully you've been collecting as many items as you can, or more specifically ingredients as you can, so that you can start... Uh, crafting and using them in order to increase your alchemy. So, as you can see, just right there, testing out our uh, our little uh, <laughs> our thing here. We're we're gonna re uh, build up our al alchemy a little bit. Don't use any of the blue butterfly wings, uh, salt piles, uh, snowberries, or anything like that that you get. You're gonna want to save up as many of those as possible, especially your salt piles and your fish. But everything else, eh, give it a little sample. See how it goes. You can figure out different things that you can craft together as soon as possible so you know what you can use to try to create a bunch of different items. So we're going we're gonna to sample all this stuff and hopefully not die while doing it. Okay, we're still alive. He didn't enjoy it, but hey, it'll help build up our alchemy and we'll do some more alchemy building later. After that... We're going to want to go talk to this guy. So we're going to need to do two things. We need money, and we need to start gathering our ingredients. And three, we need the uh, one particular enchantment, of which, for that enchantment, and I've already got uh, some equipment for it, and I'll try to put instructions up on the screen as we're doing this, but we are going to need a helmet, some bracers, a necklace, and a ring.
because we're going to want to enchant as many of these as possible. But the thing that we need for an enchantment is we need uh, craft or alchemy improvement uh, or bolster alchemy is what we're going to need. Now, there's the chance that it can show up in some of the shops, but we can't always guarantee that's going to happen. But what we can guarantee is that at least one quest will give it to us. And I'll explain which quest we need to do to be able to get access to that. But let's look at uh, this. I'm going to have a link if you want to try to get a whole bunch of money right away. So we're going to hire this carriage so we can start heading off. And this is why you need to sell off as much as you can. So you have some money for the traveling. One of the first places we're going to need to go to... Uh, at the very least to start gathering crafting material is we're going to need to go to Riften. Now, if we want to start uh, getting some extra money, you're going to want to go to Dawnstar and you're going to want to go to Markarth. But I'll have that in the other video, so you may want to check that out really quick or get a whole bunch of money and extra items and then come back and check this out. You're also going to need to have access to Windhelm. So if you have enough gold, you're going to want to get all three of those checkpoints. So we're going to start by gathering materials. And I'm going to show you what we can gather over in Riften. I'll be back. All right, we have made ourselves over to Riften. While we're here, we're going to head over this way. And uh, specifically because we're looking for uh, certain items. We're going to go... Oh, i got to do a little swimming. Let's go into the water. Head into the pool. We'll see if I, oh, I can actually find anything that we're looking for. Salmon. So this is one of the things that we're going to have to do. Because we're looking for these guys. There we go. The Ab, uh, Absean Longfin is one of the things that we're going to be looking for. Which we might be able to find some of here. But the first place you're going to want to go to start collecting uh, materials. Is particularly for this trick. Uh, just because it's an easy place to find some of it. I believe this is the building. Here we are. We're going to go into the Riften Fishery. I've got to wait until morning. So I'm going to quickly wait and we'll be right back. All right. The fishery is open. So let's go ahead inside and we're going to start gathering materials. So the great thing about the Riften Fishery, well, they may not necessarily, they have a lot of salmon and the like. Oh, we can steal. Please help me. I'm going to lose my job at the Rift. Okay, Fishery. we're going to talk to this lady here. I really need your help. You might lose I your job. My job at the Rift. And I don't mean to do that. If you could give me sure, a healing. Sure, here you are. So if you have a healing potion on you, forgotten. give it to uh, Wujita. Here, take this. It's all I can offer you for what you've given me. All right, she's going to give us a silver ring, so that's useful. But the one thing that it does is it allows us to actually start searching and taking items. So we're going to look for any Abysseans or Cyrodelic fish while we're here. Though I found not a lot of them showed up. Other than right here. So Cyrodelic uh, Spaytail. This is another one that we're going to want, uh, want to grab. So we'll grab those. But we're also here primarily to grab salt piles. So we need a fair uh, amount of each. You're Probably if you want to do all of this... In a relatively short order, you're going to probably need 20 to 30 uh, total between the combination of the two types of fish and the salt it's pile. Because that allows you to actually craft uh, the potion of restoration. So that's our first recipe that we're going to need to work on is this uh, this particular one. So we're going to grab MC and uh, long fins, salt piles... We're going to grab as much of this as I can. So we're not going to get all of what we need in a single stop here. And this is where this is going to take time. Much of this is probably going to take a little bit longer to think. And you can go and explore. There's a lot of places where you can get salt pile. You can definitely buy them from shops if you've got the money to do so. And I use the uh, uh, hidden chests to accumulate some gold and start getting some of that stuff. So we've already got 18 salt piles. And we've got one spade tail, and we've got a couple of long fins. So we still have a ways to go to get all of that. The other things we're going to need is snowberries. And blue butterfly wings. And I'll show you what uh, some of this crafts here. And then there's a couple other recipes that we'll need here and there potentially to help out. So now that we've done this, our next goal is to go find a good spot to get the fish. Because if you're trying to do it this way... It's going to take you forever. But there are some decent spots to get 
a decent amount of shit, uh, fish in a relatively short period of time. So the first place we're going to head to is actually up over here by Iverstead. And I'm going to make the quick trek to get over there, and then I'll show you what I mean. All right. So we have made it to the kind of southwestern part of the lake near Iverstead. It's actually just right over here if you go and find it. And you'll probably want to find the locations here just so you can fast travel back here after you give it some time to respawn. But now we just go and head into the water. So you just head through, do some swimming, make sure... Uh, I mean, if you're an Argonian, this is not an issue, but occasionally make sure you're uh, not in a situation where you're going to drown because that would be awkward. But you can see I picked up one long fin there. Just trying to avoid uh, some people picking fights. So we can see some fish off in the distance. And we're just going to go around this entire lake. Now we're going to find a an assorted mix of fish as we do this. So it kind of depends on what decides to spawn as to how much you're going to find. So there we go. There's a couple of spade tails. And like I said, we're looking for Cyrodiilk spade tails. And we're looking for Abyssinian uh, long, uh, long fins or whatever they are. And you're just going to scour the lake until you find a whole bunch and see what you end up with and then what you can do is you can head out and go do some of your other uh finding do a little bit of waiting maybe go on an adventure earn a little bit of money uh do some do some alchemy crafting things like that and and then come back a little bit later usually takes i'd say give yourself about a week if you're going to be doing the waiting or if you're just going to play through give yourself about a week of in-game time before stuff will start to respawn again. And you can just keep going around. You see there's a lot of stuff to use as uh, potential travel waypoints. And we're going to go around until we've gathered a decent amount. I'd say between the two types of fish, you're going to want at least... I'd say, just to be safe, about 40 or so of those guys to combine and about the same amount in salt piles so we've got got seven so far because we did uh, we found a little bit uh, a few on our way we've already got 11 uh spade tails and we're sitting at about 18 salt piles so we've actually got a decent uh you know, equal amount of both a decent spread so we're going to want to scour various locations anywhere that's got docks there's a good chance to potentially either get fish oh we're starting to drown and see, now we've discovered Iverstead. And a random arrow. Somebody tried to shoot me with an arrow, I think. Okay, can't fish around, uh, swim around the arrow. So we go around, scour the lake a little bit more. You can check rivers. Uh, you know, I followed the river from Markarth to here and got some of them on the way. So you're going to want to do all that. We're going to gather, you're going to keep gathering materials of all kinds and gather as many fish, salt pile, that kind of stuff from there. If you're also looking to get the snowberries, I don't have any really good spots for the uh, butterfly wings. Just keep an eye out for butterflies all over the place. You may not need a whole lot of them, but I've got about eight, and that should be more than enough. And snowberries are fairly easy to find as well. If you actually uh, take yourself over to Dawnstar, so like in the uh, other video, if you want to uh, get the one chest there. You can head over to Dawnstar and there's a ton of uh, snowberries all around there and they're fairly prevalent in shops. In addition, obviously you can also try to buy some of these items in shops. Though the fish are not very common. So we're going to keep gathering materials but now we've got to get to the next step. And the next step of this is we need items that have access to craft alchemy. So, and this will be something that improves our alchemy and it'll be the first step in making this trip work now they do randomly show up in the shop so you can try to see if they'll show up in one of the shops so you can buy it so that you can disenchant it to be able to enchant the items that you need or keep it as one either way we're going to need one and there is a way to guaranteed get a uh a crafting or an item with the uh alchemy uh enchantment sorry I just lost my train of thought. And the way to do that is actually to start the Dark Brotherhood quest. So if you're not familiar with this quest, basically head over to Windhelm. You're going to find a house and people talking about a, uh, a boy that's trying to do the Dark Brotherhood pact. Go into the house and talk to the boy. 
he's going to ask you to go to Riften to uh, kill the, uh, the, the, the woman that runs the orphanage there. Uh, Grollowed the, uh, the kind. After you do that, spend a couple of days waiting, and you're going to get a message about from the Dark Brotherhood saying they know. Rest anywhere for at least an hour, and you will be taken to a camp or to a spot to work your way into the Dark Brotherhood quest. As long as you get that going, you can start the Dark Brotherhood. From there, you're going to go to their camp. You're going to take on one of the assassin, uh, assassination contracts that you get right at the beginning. After you do that, you're going to get a uh, another uh, quest from Astrid. That quest and that assassination will have you going over to Markarth to talk to a woman there. Complete that assassination and she will give you a ring that has uh, enchant alchemy. So I'm going to step away. I'm going to go do all of this stuff because I'm not going to make you have to watch all the way through that. We'll come back once I have that item and I'll show you the next step. All right. So while I was looking around and uh, starting to do the Dark Brotherhood quest, I actually got in luck and Bellathor in Whiterun actually had an item that I was looking for. So he has a circlet of minor alchemy. I do have to make sure I can afford it. So we are going to try to uh, sell a whole bunch of extra stuff that we have in order to access said item. So let's see how much we can sell. Oh, there we go. I think... We have enough. Let's go see. We do. Okay. So there we go. So we now have that item. We're going to sell some stuff just to need to make a little bit of money so this is just stuff that i had uh, found that i was able to sell we're not really going to worry about uh these they're not worth enough to sell Let's see what else i have i have this heirloom like i said i had started doing the quest but we had uh we'd had some fortune so yeah all right so we made some money we now have the item that we're looking for all we need to go uh, do now is actually disenchant it and then enchant a bunch of other items with the very same enchantment all right i have an enchanting table and now what we're going to do is we're going to use the disenchant to break down this circlet so that we have, and now have the alchemy enchantment you probably want to also get as many other enchantments for later once we've done all this stuff you're going to want to start enchanting your weapons your armor and all that kind of stuff with everything you need now all we've got to do is start making the items that we need, start working on our alchemy. So we want to get that alchemy to level 40 as soon as we can. There's a couple of good ingredients and stuff that you can use to create that, and we'll go from there. Okay, so here we are. We're ready to uh, craft some stuff. We're going to save our game first, but that way we don't lose any progress. Save once, save often. Now we're going to head in, use a potion of enchanting that we created just a little bit ago, and we're going to use that to make these a little bit easier. Then we are going to go access the table, if they'll let us, and we're going to start enchanting our gear. We have four pieces of gear that we can enchant, these gauntlets, the helmet, the necklace, and the ring, and we're going to give each one of that craft element. I know that 8% more powerful doesn't seem like much, but... Give it some time, and this will be uh, a good uh, starting base for what we're going to do. Also remember, by enchanting all four, you actually increase the total benefit that you get to 32%. So it actually all adds up and stacks together. From here, we're going to head over to the uh, local herbalist, and we're going to start improving our alchemy. One of the best ways to do this, and to do it very quickly, is actually to grab three items. You're gonna need creep cluster, you're gonna need giant's toes, and we're gonna need wheat. If I get a chance, I'm gonna do another video on where to find those ingredients to get the most out of that, because pretty much until you get to about level 40, which is where we need to get to, you can pretty much gain a level every time you make one of the potions using those items. So let's get that going. Let's get the levels we need to get this, and we're gonna go make some potions. Be right back. 
Okay, so now we've improved our alchemy up to 40. We're grabbing the last of the alchemist uh, abilities that we need to grab at this moment. And we're pretty much ready to go now. So you need to get at least five levels. So you can grab the three levels of this uh, and the other two levels to get up to Benefactor. And of course, get your alchemy to level 40. It could take a little bit, or it could be fairly short. It depends on whether you're able to grab uh, stuff like the uh, Creep Cluster plus Giant's Toe and Wheat to make uh, potions that will gain you levels really quickly, or whether you're relying on paying some of the other uh, vendors to teach you alchemy. Eventually, you'll get your alchemy to level 40. So let's save our game before we start running through this. And then we'll go over the basic process. So here's the step-by-step -step process here. If you don't already have a uh, Potion of Restore, put on all your uh, alchemy items and make one. If you already have one, like I did here, take all of your equipment off. These potions have a interesting side benefit in addition to increasing your uh, restoration uh, power. It also increases the effect of all of your enchantments. So something to remember for later if you want to make your enchantments on your equipment a little bit better is to take one of these potions. So remember to take off your equipment first. I'm going to reiterate this a couple of times because you're going to be going through this process when you're trying to do this every single time. So you're going to uh, drink the potion. And you can see now that in a, as opposed to the 8% that it had when we started, it's now at 11%. Put all your equipment back on. Let's head to that table. Let's get crafting. So the ingredients you need for Restore Alchemy is either the Abyssin Longfin or the Cyrodiil Spade Tail. So we're going to create that. And you can see that the original percentage, now it is better. It's at 80% at this point and a significant improvement. Quit out of there, go back into your gear, take off all your equipment, start drinking that potion, put the equipment on, and we're going to rinse and repeat. This whole process takes about 15 minutes to do once you start getting going. And as you can see, I sped this up a ton. The first part of it, the growth is only going to be kind of minimal, like 30% on the potions and 2% on your gear. But as you progress, that percentage was starting to increase and increase and increase. And over a bit of time, you're going to start seeing a more exponential growth on both sides of it until you start getting into some pretty crazy numbers where you're seeing, you know, an uh, increase of a thousand percent and stuff like that. And even higher as we get further on until you reach kind of a critical junction point and you can see where it is just up ahead here. Look at that. 200,000 times better. We're going to craft one. And we just went up four levels just making this one. And we do have to be careful here. Because there is a certain point if we try to make these too powerful, it will actually crash your game. I've discovered this on the... Uh, at least on the Xbox version. So now the uh, everything we make is 17,000 times better. So we're going to go, and we're going to go down here, and we're going to make this potion. Let's look at what uh, kind of potion of restoration we can make. So this one is ridiculous, and we want to be really careful before we use said potion. But we, what we're actually going to do, and you can just watch the, the jump, is we're going to actually make a couple of a potions of enchanting. Uh, in in a few minutes here, so I'm going to quit alchemy, and let's see if this uh, works without crashing the game. So I'm going to drink this potion. We're going to put on this. So now, look at how much more powerful our potions are. It's at a ridiculous level at this point. So I can't uh, make any more fortify restorations at this moment without uh, switching up. What we can do is we can also use the Cyrodiilic uh, Spine Tail. And you can create, look at how massive this is now. We have this at 100. Let's make some uh, potions 
Uh, we'll clear our selections, make some potions of enchant. Just gonna grab a few. All right. So now we've actually just reached a critical mass level with this. This is this is pretty much as far as you need to go with the restoration. Because now what you can do is eventually the restoration will wear off. And these potions won't be quite as effective. Because right now they're creating enchanting items at 2 million percent stronger. It'll drop down to about a million percent. But now what we can do is we can drink those potions. And go create some enchantments. So... I want uh, to make some new uh, uh, creative potions because once the, the restoration uh, wears off, this will go back to 8% once we're done. However, you can now use these potions of enchanting to create gauntlets and uh, stuff like that that will already have that massive percentage for creating potions. So you can always create potions at that level. From there... This is where it gets ridiculous. This is where I can start making all sorts of equipment. And the thing about this function is it's pretty much... Uh, there's pretty much nothing stopping you from creating whatever you can off of this. So let's, let's, let's actually go play with that. We're going to go... We're going to go make a ring. I need to get to an enchanting table. Let's, once again, save before we do anything. Because I want to hold... I'll, I'll want those potions for later. But we're going to go in here. And you can see now they're back to 8%. But what I'm going to do is I've got I still got this potion restoration. So it's still providing a huge bonus. So are these. Uh, these fortify enchanting. So I'm going to fortify my enchant. We're going to quickly go in here. I'm going to enchant this silver ring with fortify alchemy. Oh, and there's the game crashing. It can't actually handle... <laughs> There's the game crashing. So it can't actually handle an alchemy uh, or a uh, uh, a potion rating that high. So this is where we're going to probably go back and play around with our potions. So you've got to be very careful how high you take it. <laughs> we took it a little high there. Okay, guys, we did a little work. Uh, we, we did some figuring out. So I made a second uh, potion that only does 81,000%. I know it's still ridiculous, but it's not so bad. So though a byproduct, if you were to sell one of these uh, ridiculously high Fortify potions, uh, you'd actually max out your speech instantaneously. So if we go up here really quick, I'm going to show you this be just because... I unwittingly uh, maxed it out. We're going to go... I got to deal with all these levels, sorry. Okay, so we're going to go over to my speech. Which, like I said, is at 100 right now. And I'm going to make this legendary. I'm going to reset uh, reset it. Uh, make it skill legendary. Okay, so... And let's see. I just have to show you this, just... So that you see, it's here. If you're here about the nightmare, huh. I had you figured for a mage. And oh, okay, so you this. can't. I can't sell it to you. Okay. Well, I'll show you uh, something else here. So we're gonna go to the enchanting tales. So we're gonna get ready to enchant, and I'm gonna show you the effect on that uh, one silver ring that has no enchantments. We're gonna use these ones because we use the other one. It's gonna crash, and we're gonna go down here. And now we're going to take the silver ring. We're going to give it Fortify Alchemy. So if you look at that right there, it actually really doesn't matter what gem we use. You know, it's going to be either 100,000 or, you know, 15 million or, or something like that. So a million. So we use this grand gem and we enchant it. So our enchanting is going to get a decent boost. And we've got everybody talking in the background. And with this, now we actually have a ring that provides essentially all of those bonuses right there. So now I can make any of those uh, enchanting potions at this level all I want without ever having to equip more than this. And we can do pretty much whatever we want with it. So now 
we can go to the enchanting table with these enchanting potions and we can give our items any of these enchantments. You can make ridiculous weapons that do ridiculous amounts of damage. You can have ridiculous amount of regeneration and the like all right there. It's actually a ton of fun. It's kind of ridiculous all the way through. So pretty much any type of thing you want. You want to be able to carry every item in Skyrim? Fortify carry weight. All this kind of stuff. It's absolutely ridiculous. So, however, that being said, uh, and I can, I, I can save and load, Take a look. is I could actually sell this ring for so much money. Well, right now you'd have to reload the game, but it'll sell for a lot of money. But if I sell that potion... All right, then. Now, you can do amazing things. <laughs> but suffice to say, there's a lot you can do this. You can level a lot of stuff, your alchemy, all that kind of stuff by making these potions of restoration. You can craft any type of gear with some ridiculous enchantments. That's how I got such ridiculous hit points, stamina, and magicka with the other character. But I can apply it to my sneak. I can apply it to my light armor. So if you make a suit of light armor with the light armor enchantment... You're going to have thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of armor. You can't be hurt. But on the same note, the great thing about this is, yes, I can totally break the game. And I'm going to go sell this potion to this lady. She definitely doesn't have enough money for uh, what I'm about to sell to her. But we're going to sell this. And our speech went from 15 to 100 in a second. I know it's ridiculous. Let me know if you come down with the so there's a lot of things you can do with this uh, this little exploit and it's just playing around with it. I'm probably going to have this uh, embedded in a blog post that'll have a uh, written description of all the stuff that we did here in the process. Hopefully this video it wasn't as ridiculous long as it's probably going to be. I'm going to probably play around with it to clean it up and hopefully you guys enjoyed checking this out if you want more details or if you want me to go and create smaller videos that are more concise parts of this let me know in the comments below check out my other skyrim videos as well i've got one for finding some free items very very easy and very early on in the game leveling with some of the other spells not quite as ridiculous as this leveling but pretty good nonetheless and yeah check out my other guides for Dark Souls, and more. Have fun, keep gaming, and I'll see you guys again next time.